Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Do not adjust your monitor, your phone. Yes, it is right. What you're seeing is correct. We've got actually, well, we're, well, we probably, we're normal. Count, we're, we we're, probably we're, count as one podcaster, yeah, we, we, right? We, we, Between we, the two of us. But yeah. we've got a covey of podcasters here, a maybe a gaggle or a herd of <laughs> podcasters um, here. We're live at Viva Fresh Expo in Houston, Texas, beautiful Houston, Texas. And joining us today, aside from my very dapper, handsome co-host, oh, Mr. Craig Slate. Oh, thank you very Slate, much. I appreciate that shout-out. Is Mr. Patrick Kelly from the Produce Industry Podcast. Patrick, hey, thanks hello, for being here. Hello, Patrick. Hello, hello. Great to be here. Good thank morning. You, thank you. Good morning. And Mr. Shay Myers, CEO of Owyhee Produce and also host of Produce Common Sense Podcast. Thank Shay, you for me. thanks be for being here. here, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we know Beautiful it's a place. busy day, y'all. It is. The, the show just kicked off. Uh, we had the ribbon cutting just a few minutes ago. Um, what do you guys think so far of the show? Obviously, today's the first day of the expo, but we've had a couple days here. You guys have had some meetings. Yeah, this is our um, third time. This is our third time being here. Sorry to cut you off, but no, we've no. liked it every single time. We've liked to come back, and uh, the crowds are good. Uh, obviously, the the business, business uh, in this part of the world is great, and it, it seems to get better and better every single year. So uh, if, if you haven't come, you should be coming, because it's a whether you've got a booth or not, just to be here. I mean, the crowds are great. The people are good. And the way they treat you as like the, 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 the event itself, the food, the snacks, the in-between stuff, I hate going to trade shows and starving all day, and that doesn't happen here. You know, that's a good point, actually. So very early on when we were... Um, conceptualizing the event I'm talking 11 years ago that was a key focus like we had all been to trade shows and conventions where the food was lacking and honestly enough or oddly enough um, as we started working with the chefs at these huge resorts because you don't think they can actually produce something that's you know of high quality they're super into it like they're they want to do special things and they want to work with our guests and exhibitors product it's just a matter of you know, bringing it up and, and they'll work with you. So I've been in kind of the back bowels of the kitchens, like that they, they're huge, industrial, enormous kitchens, but they have 15 different chefs working back there. So that's pretty cool. Um, you guys come from far away, so I'm going to go out on a limb. You said it already, like you, you see the value of being here, which is phenomenal. We're super excited. Um, so you guys are doing any interviews, talking to people. I think you said you were doing some stuff yesterday. Yeah, we did some stuff yesterday. I got in on Thursday uh, love Houston. You know, I told it to someone the other day, and they were like, "I'm sorry, what? You, li you like Houston? <laughs> I, like you like Houston?" And no, it's great. I mean, we have customers here, uh, the ports here. So when I when I flew in on Thursday, obviously we went right to the terminal market, went to see some clients, went to see some of our produce. Right? I mean, that's that's one thing, and did a lot of retail store checks as well. Uh, one thing that I do when I travel is I always go check out retail stores. Heck, I mean, John Pando, I'm trying to beat his. I think he does about 72 <laughs> store checks. Good luck with that. You know, per every hour and a half, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, getting here, it, it, it's a good show. This is my third year after, you know, kind of uh, after COVID. I, I never experienced uh, Viva and kind of lobbying to come to the show, um, seeing what it is. What, what I like about the show is it's, it's a differentiator. A um, lot of vendors and clients here that you don't see at other traditional shows because they stay to the regional showcase of texas uh so it, it is it, it's amazing to see the different clientele and networking uh that can be put together here uh as for food i i starved yesterday everyone uh it had nothing to do with the show though uh, you're fasting Intermet Intermet yeah, Intermet right, fasting right, that's, right? That's that was your program it was but yeah. fasting's uh, no. the new starving uh, apparently though the speaker said that's not good so it's i don't know definitely not we uh, oh i don't know i disagree with that we did our we could have a debate on we that we did our interviews yeah. About nine, we did nine to twelve yesterday. We had a small room, and uh, you know, if you guys see my stuff, you know, I'm just, I'm talking, having fun. You know, what's happening? And we did about, we did, we, we did ours yesterday too. Yep. Our, I think we talked more about flying in your plane than we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I wanted to talk we about did, today. We did about produce, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's it's great. And what I like about it is, certain clients go to certain shows, right? Like I just said, mm -hmm. and I'm able to see some international clients that I don't see at some of the other shows that'll fly in specifically for this uh, because it falls around their fiscal year and their planning cycle. So right. yeah, pretty cool. All right, so that's Viva Fresh, absolutely off to a great start. It's been a blast that's putting been confirmed. that together. That's and, been confirmed. And, and not only is it off to a good start, you know, it's been a great part for us to be part of with the podcast, right? and participate in but what i really want to know is 
I want to know you guys. I want to know about you and your history. We uh, charge for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I, I think we paid a pretty penny for this. You know, <laughs> guys, this ain't free. Coffee you, and you water. Think, you think <laughs> these guys well, well, we got some yeah. Yeah. Start with you, Patrick. I mean, everybody knows you as the produce podcaster. The, yeah. the the main guy and, and as it goes to produce and so how did you get there because i know you i know i don't think you did at least you started out podcasting so. yeah no i didn't uh you know the podcast i, I always say and i, I laugh about this because it's like I, I love and hate telling the story because it's one of those ones as an entrepreneur uh, it's i love talking about it but it's like i love progressing right i love growth so it, it was it all happened in 2020 you know, shutdown happened. I had a podcast called Millennial Boom. It was based on my book that I co-authored uh, with a baby boomer. It was about growing together, thriving in life and work. And I, I pretty much talked about how as a millennial business owner, uh, trying to work with baby boomers, right? How to present, how to uh, technology, you know, how, how to's, you know, rules of engagement. And I remember a, a buddy of mine, you know, Shay, we talked about this, like, I remember my buddy goes, man, that's a controversial subject. You're, you're, you're talking about the people that, that, that feed you and pay your paycheck every mm -hmm. week. And I always go, well, they don't pay my paycheck. I, I own my own business, you know? <laughs> and, and it was funny because my buddy was like, what do you do for a living? And I said, <laughs> I sell citrus. And he goes, what? Right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, yeah. When I sold yeah, right? when I sold yep. bananas, uh, that was always the question. It's, it's the, like you're a banana salesman. Yeah, you do Wait, that. Like so, that's a job. So, yeah. So yeah. like you actually like sell citrus on the side of the road, like in bags. I'm like, <laughs> yep. Like, technically, yes, I do. So, <laughs> you know, my buddy was just like, you should do a produce podcast, and I said, yeah, no one wants to listen to some 33 year old bearded millennial that sells citrus all day. And sure enough, they, he was like, I would. And I'm like, yeah, but you also teach people how to start podcasts. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, he, yeah. I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, uh, I'm becoming another notch on your belt, bro. <laughs> and yeah, no, he goes, listen, let's do it. Boom. Uh, literally a week later, COVID hit. He calls me and goes, I'm doing a master class March 27th. He goes, why don't you come in? We've got three business owners. And you've heard this story. Yeah. We have three business owners. Come on in and let's, let's talk about what we can do together. I walk in. There's a board, three boards, you know, remember in, in, in high school or college, there was three boards. One had someone's name on it. The other one had someone's name on it. And right in the middle, it said the Produce Industry Podcast with Patrick Kelly. I didn't even know what that meant at the time. I sat through an eight hour master class and uh, I went home that, ne that night and I recorded a one minute intro. And April 1st, uh, well, it's funny because I had called a few people that had podcasts in our uh, in our industry, industry first. yeah. You know, Lori Taylor, mm -hmm. the produce moms, Brent Aaronworth, the produce life. And I tried to get a hold of University of Riverside in Florida, but they didn't they don't answer their phones. <laughs> okay. Um, so I realized like, yeah, there there's a niche. There's a need to get on demand information out, right? As watching Shay do videos and coming in with fresh plaza every week, I was like, there's no audio sources out there that's giving on demand marketing trends through COVID. So we started, I recorded my first day, uh, Monday, April 1st of 2020 with Brent Aaronwert. Four years later, we recorded with Brent Aaronwert, April 1st, 2024. Yeah, there's no there's no theme there, right? And that that <laughs> April 1st date? Right. No, no, there was no, it wasn't. And, and it's funny because now we're uh, over 420 episodes later and it just went from, I'm gonna have fun and just build a community together like I was trying to do with baby boomers and millennials. And it's just something that I never expected that would happen has happened. And now, like I said, 420 episodes, four shows. Um, Shay's a sponsor of the show since, you know, since inception of this deal. And, and I believe it grows our industry in a way that other associations and groups aren't doing. It's thriving together, it's building together. And it's, it's utilizing relationships that we didn't before. And that's what I love most about it. So the journey, obviously I'm enjoying the journey, as I say all the time, like I love to talk about it. It's it just, it's happening so fast that I'm just trying to sit and enjoy the journey and, and process it more than, you know, going after it so much. Right, know? right. So, so, but let's, let's go back a little further. So citrus. Right. So yeah. before before you're deciding to write a book, so hats off to you on the book writing. But how'd you get to Citrus? How did that get started? Because yeah. you're originally what out of California, correct? Out of California. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, Grandma started at Hughes Markets in Pasadena. Yep, you're shaking. He knows. Yeah, I know Hughes. 
Uh, she was a produce manager at Hughes Markets. Okay. Sold to El Rancho Supermarkets. Uh, grandma uh, lived in Huntington Beach all her life. Uh, my dad worked at the same grocery store. My dad went to Pasadena High. Um, so over the years, uh, both my, my nana and uh, immigrants from Canada, okay. uh, they came down, started life for themselves. And at the end of the day, uh, dad, you know, was stocking shelves as a young man. And back in the days uh, when you could get promoted right in the store, <laughs> uh, you know, he got promoted and went to work for like Shasta Cola, st started selling like citric acid for Shasta Cola, got into Sarah Lee, selling orange marmalade for Sarah Lee, and then ended up meeting a grower pack shipper in his early days and got paired up with citrus, packing houses, uh, juices, things like that. So my dad became a juice broker, broker in juice out of Brazil and Florida. <laughs> and then, like I said, partnered with a, a packing house in California for over 20 years. So that's where I started, right? Yeah. Uh, picking well, you were born at some point, right? I, so I, you were I, born, and I was, then now, I was born and, and there's this citrus deal going and on. And at 15, my dad uh, had us picking oranges. So that was uh, my dad was an entrepreneur as well. So we were picking oranges at 15. Worked for my dad for a few years, and you know, as I say, uh, dad and I didn't always get along. And uh, I started my own company. No. And uh, I did citrus, right? Like I just, I, I was broker. That seemed citrus. natural. Yeah. So <laughs> we did other things, pineapples and grapes yeah. and other things. And then, yeah, and then, like I said, just progressed through my career. And then when COVID happened, just kind of kind of picked up uh, doing the podcast. Got it. Still sell citrus to this day. Yeah, all right. So I'm still that's in a hell still. of an elevator speech. Like, that is. Well, yeah. Citrus <laughs> supply chain. That's, that's an that's a Empire State Building. Uh. So it is, uh, but it's a bit of a fun journey. Like I said, it's, it's, I love selling citrus. I love being in the, in the actual day-to-days, right, like we all do. But but right but 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 i do love being able to connect with people on a level that is beyond citrus yeah patrick and that's what i love the most i'm gonna go out on a limb and say you're on all the time what do you mean you're on like you're on all the time you're thinking about work podcast whatever like you're not no I mean, I, where i'm going with pretty, this is that close. yeah no, you yeah. know okay, right. speaking <laughs> of millennials you know folks particularly younger than you you know um i i, I hate the term work-life balance i think there's no such thing um, if you love what you do, like, yeah. yeah and know. if you love what you do, you know, we, we, There's some we talk PC about all the time term for that. What was it? I just heard it the other day. Isn't I don't it know. Listen, uh, I, I have a crazy work life balance. Like people, people ask me, I mean, Ed, we talked about that too. When we first chatted, my work life balance is my family and my kids. I can tell you right now, I will give up a million dollar deal to go to my kid's soccer game. Yeah. Like I, I don't, uh, but you might go home and go back to work or you might have to do so like, I am it's gonna, not, I am going to, I am going to finally say no. Oh, really? So I have gotten to a point and this happened and everyone, I mean, this is Shay knows about this. So my wife had heart issues a couple years ago. Okay. She was in the hospital for a month. Everyone, wow. uh, a lot of people don't know that. And I, as myself always thought like I'm doing my job as a husband. When my wife went into the hospital, I realized very fast how she does 99% of everything. <laughs> yeah. And I knew she always did, guys. Like, I really did. And But I realized how much of a presence. Like, I was doing stuff, but being present in the moment. Shay, you and I have talked about yeah, this. Yeah. And I got to a point where it was I was there, but I wasn't present. So my wife and I had this idea about uh, doing therapy, uh, one for me for behavioral therapy on trying to let go and trying to work on things like within the family and things like that. So I was always on, yes. But over the last 12 months, I would say, oh no, you can't get me. I even have now told people if it's four o'clock and you try to schedule meetings with me, it'll automatically decline after four o'clock. I take my kids to school. I don't get to work till 8.30, 9 o'clock in the mornings. Um, I block off my schedules on every Friday once a month. My kids have off school. I take off school, we go to the beach. Every Good Friday, every Memorial Day, every Martin Luther King holiday, um, I've changed. So my work-life balance has gone to being a present husband, father, uh, and I would say, you know, member of the family uh, compared to, I mean, Shay, you remember when we first met, right? It was, I was probably worked every weekend. So guys, yes, I, I do have a work-life balance, but I've come to the point now where Ed, you and I talked about your son and it's my kids. It's like, they're growing up too fast. Yeah. No, they do. And, 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 you wake and, up and it's over. And then that's when, you know, my work-life balance came in. So it's just like the last year. Yes, guys. The last year. Yeah, 100%. If you asked me two years ago, I'd have been like, yeah, man, I work on well, Saturdays. And, and, I, and everybody's I'm, in a different season of their I'm life. Like, yeah, on you. Sundays. You're, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. right now, I mean, like he's empty he's nest, old. old. Yeah, I'm that's almost there. <laughs> no, where I'm going is that 
you know, no, you, you pick you. it up when you want to. You put it down when you want to. No, I, I mean, told that's my the, wife that. That's the beauty of, you know, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Yeah. My wife said that to me. And Shay, remember we talked, like, it was like two weeks ago, Shay. And uh, it was Good Friday. And then, the, and then Easter Monday. And I was like, no, I'm taking off the whole, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you're like, yeah. I was like, listen, my wife yells at me. She's like, you own your own business. She's like, I know that means you have to work more. She goes, but what that means is I get to tell you to take off work and we're going to the beach. And I was like, you know what? Tell me we're going to the beach again. <laughs> tell me we're going to the I beach. Dare you. We're going to the beach. Okay, I'm out. Yeah. People are like, where are you at? I'm like, oh my God, I'm, like I'm at the beach. Yeah. Shay, what beach do you go to, Shay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm a long ways from the beach. <laughs> yeah. You don't go to the beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, Shay, as you come in, so... I want to get at some point to the plane discussion. Uh -huh. You yeah, know, that right. came up. I want to hear about the plane. I, I take it you're a pilot, so I want to get to that. But you two are in the podcast game, bringing yeah. out great information to, <laughs> to the citizens of the, the world, I guess, at this point. That's the beauty of the podcast. I mean, you know, you're, you're reaching not just here, but we're reaching all over. But, uh, yeah, tell us about you. What, 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 who, what who brought you to here? start that? Thing? Yeah, That's yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. Before you got to that, yeah, yeah, so, say, get us back to how you even got into produce. Yeah, yeah so thir third-generation farm kit, okay. uh, i.e., like, and that's where most of my content you're going to find is on, uh, you know, with that, with that uh, name, Shea Farm Kit. Uh, it'll be on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and, 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 I'll, and LinkedIn. Uh, and I'll explain where I got there in just a second. Uh, yeah, third-generation farm kit. My, my grandfather started post uh, Korean War, right? He got a GI Bill and, and uh, kind of went out and began farming. And uh, he worked for his in-laws all the way until the late 70s, right? So from the, the late 50s, for 20 years, he worked for his in-laws, but he always knew his... You know, what's he growing? What, what? So we're, we grow every, nine different crops. Okay. Um, but in our region, uh, onions, potatoes, um, a lot of seed crops are grown there. Okay. Uh, and then other commodity crops, sugar beets, uh, wheat, corn, et cetera. But, you know, really our lifeblood, we live and die by what, what's happening in the onion market. That's probably 70% of our gross revenue comes from uh, from uh, from our onion production. Onion deal. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he he started that again on his own, but finally was able to break out in the late 70s. One of my uncles came back with him. And his his dream was to always have a place where his family could work together. And, you know, so this is happening in the, like, I graduate in 99. I, I'm done with college in uh, like 2005. Um, I didn't want to farm, though. I didn't, I didn't want to go back to the farm. And I didn't, well, and I, I guess the thing is, is what's weird is I didn't want to be a farmer. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea of the business, and I really love the idea of continuing a family legacy. But there was no one. So I'm, I'm like the oldest uh, grandchild, right? So you kind of have these... I, to me, I see this all over the place. The generational or what not generational, but also birth order, like where you happen to fall in in your family birth order and where you fall in in your extended family birth order has a huge impact on the way that you see the world. Right. And and I really had like this this I was always really proud of being a farm kid. And in fact, I didn't realize like to me being a farm kid and growing up on a farm, I knew what that meant. My first experience in realizing how little people understand of what, what being a farmer is happened in a leadership okay. course. I was in the okay. student council in high school and I went to, uh, to the big city. I went to Portland, Oregon, right? I was living on, <laughs> in, in Nyssa, Oregon, went to Portland, Oregon. And you were supposed to tell everyone a little bit about yourself. And then the rest of the group was supposed to draw a picture. And I said, I'm a farm kid. And everyone drew a barn, you know, with the guy with the pitchfork <laughs> and the tractors and, and, and the chickens and stuff. Small and I'm like, USA, yeah, right? like, and I'm like, I'm going to say that's that. What I'm thinking of. And, and that was like probably the Shay. first time. Like, I'm like, everyone thinks I'm just this country bumpkin that, you know, probably doesn't. You're not. Just, just, you know. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I mean, it's somewhat true, but not completely. Uh, so I get done with college. I'm not going to come back to the farm. But then they, the, I, I just, I just, there's this legacy that I, I can't, yeah. I cannot not come back. And. And ag sucked in the early 2000s, guys. It sucked. And I, I just, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't not come back. I had to give it a shot, but I told them I got to come back and I've got to run the business side of the operation. You don't want me out driving tractors. You don't want no. me trying to fix things. Mm -mm. You don't want me doing that. You need me trying to grow the business. So, uh, you know, we went from 200 acres of onions. Uh, well, first of all, we, we put our first packing shed in in 2006. They knew, the family knew that they wanted us to have a pack shed. We weren't vertic vertically integrated yet. They're like, Shay, you need to do this. This is what you need to do. So they threw me the wolves. They let me make massive mistakes. And that's something that you got to realize is going to happen. And you got to be willing to do. If you're going to throw someone at it uh, and throw them to the wolves, 
Yeah. You got to realize that they're going to make mistakes. They're, they're going to get nipped at and hurt. Agreed. But we did that. Um, and, you know, from that point in time, we were 200 acres in uh, 2006. Will be 1,800 acres as of this year. Um, so, so massive growth. And I've been able to be, um, you know, a driving force on that part but with the partnership of, of our farming operation, right? So I'm on the business side. I've got my family, my cousin, and, and, and my uncle on the farming side. And the, the benefit is, is we can pivot, we can move, we can do things really quickly if we have a vision and plan. And so that's you know, kind of how I ended up where I am today. Uh, to speak to one thing that I think is interesting, why did I start creating content? Uh, we, and there was what we call Snowmageddon in our area. We had a bunch of buildings that collapsed in 2017. I was already kind of on LinkedIn, 20, winter of 2016. I was already like sharing content, but on a limited basis. And I, uh, we had uh, seven onion storages collapse. Our, uh, wow. we, we were able to save our packing facility, but I started talking to people and they had no idea what was happening because this is really in a little microclimate just outside of Boise, Idaho. It was a small area mm -hmm. and uh, people didn't know what was happening. My customers are like, dude, they, they just didn't believe me. Right. right. So I started shooting the content out of like sheer, almost desperation. I had to get out there and like, and show what was happening. And as I did that, I got the feedback and I started to understand how, well, what I learned in, in high school in that, that course in Portland, Oregon, like how little people understand about ag and it just kind of built from there. The need that we have to share the common sense um, processes that we do in agriculture and how impactful that is in everyone else's life. Right. Yeah, and your stuff, I mean, that, that, you, you know, you, that, you, it resonates not just with people in the industry. I think what you're putting together resonates past that as well, right? Like you said, for, for people that don't know what goes into it, what's behind all of this, and, you know, I think that's, that's super good. You know, that's the, the kind of the idea with what we're trying to do you know, is not just talk to our own folks, but, you know, how do we reach out past who we're, who's in this business and how can we bring people, because there's people passionate about produce that aren't produce people, 100%. you Absolutely. know, and there's tons of... But they usually don't understand what we're doing. No, they don't. And there's also the other side of it, too, is we've got a lot of people in this business that don't make it to these shows or don't get the behind the scenes. There's produce managers that they're there on the front lines, but even they, you know, I think, have a desire to get more information that's kind of the the thought process and you know we're for, not, for, for you guys both you guys i think you guys do a great job and you know putting together content that like i say it's not um wonky you know industry wonky it it, it really it, I, it ideally resonates with somebody past that yeah so yeah patrick and i were talking a couple of weeks ago and um you know we got into the subject of folks that don't get it and sometimes you just you try to explain to them, at least give them a, a shot. And um, I think, what was the expression I used? A bee doesn't waste their time explaining to a fly why honey is better than crap. <laughs> um, if you don't get it, you just don't get it, right? Um, I mean, you, wanna, you want people to get there. But, um, and it's not all about self-aggrandizement, you know, uh, pat patting ourselves on the back. I, I truly feel um, like we're doing something to help people. I, I know that... We've talked about it before. My health was so poor that I prayed to God that if I got better, that I would do, I would be extra for the rest of my life and try to help as many people as possible. At least if I could, you know, help one person not feel as bad as I did. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'm not going to talk because I still want to hear the whole produce common sense start. So you better. Yeah, we've. I want to get back to that. You just gave us the whole shade of the farm kit and let us like hanging on about. Produce common sense. I don't. I don't, I don't remember how the produce common sense. Or you want me? You want the credit? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. He wants oh, yeah. the credit. Yeah. Okay. He probably gets the credit, yeah. but I, I can't. Should. Yeah. Like, hey. I can't even remember. <laughs> nudge. 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 Yeah. Uh, hey, how well, did you get well, it? You know what's funny is, is, is I remember Shay and I talking and, you know, starting that podcast and, you know, we there was another group involved. We're not gonna. We're not, we're not gonna say who. But I remember Shay and I's conversation and you know I told him I said I I, I think you should start the podcast. Um, I've consulted with a lot of people in this industry about starting a podcast uh, because one, I, I didn't just start a podcast from starting a podcast. Like, I actually had a, a start ugly podcast, right, which was horrible. Right, I think I still have like 400 downloads of that thing, like nice. to total on like 12 episodes. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> it, it's up there, man. Like, it, it's really up there. But um, I mean, on on the fact of like, it, you know, what you said about the encouragement. I mean. There's so many podcasts in this industry and everybody, I just had someone reach out the other day. There, there's going to be a new Apple podcast starting. It's just going to be about, I think, 
Michigan apples or that area. And I always tell everybody, I said, you know, if you're going to do it, do it, but don't mess around. And they're like, well, what do you mean? Like, we're going to try it out and see if it works. I said, okay. I said, so I do. Let's go waste money. I, you know, see how it works out. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do that, why don't you just give me $5,000? We'll go to a shredder. <laughs> we'll, sh we'll have the enjoyment of shredding all this money together, right? Um, but people don't realize that when you start a podcast, hosts don't make it past episode seven. Those are the stats. Really? So when you look at the churn rate of podcasts. Damn. All right. Yeah. So the churn rate of podcasts, uh, when you're looking at, there's probably over 5 million podcasts on Apple today. Mm -hmm. The churn rate is probably up near 56 to 60%. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. And so what they do is they only analyze podcasts that are weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. Okay. So the churn rate is very high, meaning that these podcasts never make it past episode seven, especially if they're monthly. Because what they do is they get to episode six and they only see 400 downloads right. or even less. So they get to a point where they're like, oh, I'm not gonna do this. We've seen this before. How many podcasts have been started in this industry? Mm -hmm. They have sponsors, they have people, and then now all of a sudden they're gone. Like, and there was no like outro of, hey, we're done, thank you. Like, you know, like when Friends left, they all came yeah. on stage and waved at everybody. Yeah, you it had was like, the, hey, it, season 342 is done, everybody. But, um, you know, no, I mean, look, I mean, you know, I told you, Craig, I mean, I have a platform that's a networking platform for other marketers and audio and podcasters. So we have a platform that Shay's podcast is on, my podcast is on, and many others in the industry, right? Um, but again, same thing, like I, I said to myself with my book, if I could change 1% of baby boomers' mindsets, right? And that 1% would just be giving like a millennial a chance, right? In the presentation, it was like, I would be happy with that. Same thing with the podcast. When I get people to come up and, you know, say, oh man, I saw you on LinkedIn. It's so funny now, cause I, I start to say things like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but it, you, you start to realize um, they want to take a picture of us out there. All of us look, oh, everybody yeah. look, yeah. Hey, hey, how are we doing? <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Um, but changing that little 1%, right? And when people come up and say, man, I saw your, I saw your uh, onions 101. I saw your market report. I saw this. We, as people get to a point where we're like us as the host, we're like, yeah, yeah. Right. But then deep down inside, you know, after the show, when you go back, I sat there and you get to think to yourself and go, yes. We touched one more person that needed a little bit extra of an outlet versus just reading the news. Every day. And that is, that is at least for me, right? You know, then that's I always tell, tell these guys, it, it's the feedback, even if it's from one or two people, right? On the, the podcast, you know, somebody comes up to you. It's the fact that we're delivering content that somebody finds valuable. I mean, that's, that's always my, somebody. I don't, I, I don't, yeah. well, I mean, at the end of the day, it, somebody, it comes right? down to be somebody because somebody out there, we see you. Does, does not matter to me, you know, as much about, you know, being on and doing a podcast. It's more about, are we producing content that has interest? Are we producing good content that has good information that, that we can share with people and super important to me and, and, you know, and, I, and something that we strive for all the time. And it's the feedback that you get from people that really, for me, keeps me going in the business. I mean, yeah. that's why we're still, we're still doing it because like I said, it's a time investment. I mean, it's, it's money investment. It's a time investment. It's, yeah. it's not, I'm, uh, I mean, I remember talking to Shay for the first time, the guys, I, 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 I followed Shay. So I, I was always nervous to do videos on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and, Shay was killing it and I remember calling Shay and I was like, like what do you do he's like I just pull up my phone and do it <laughs> and I was like you do he's like no editing no mics remember those first yeah days? yo I just do three takes and I was done, done. right I still do that part of the time I, I mean it, uh, and yeah 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 you I'm, can tell yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I mean, Listen, we did but, it yesterday like. but the, the, the don't let perfect be the enemy of right. good Amen. I mean that yes. that uh, in yes. everything you do like that's you can't let perfect be the enemy of the good and so if you don't just it, it, it create the content if you don't make the effort now I mean there is something to be said for uh, you know, a beautiful setup like this and, and something that's nice and polished. But there's also something very genuine and real about pulling my freaking phone out, you know, and, and, I like just, that stuff. and just talking about what's going on. I mean, the good, the I, bad, and, and everything in between. I agree. But Some you're fortunate to have that with of what you talk about like that's what that like well, your content too. Like, yeah, again, some of this, some of the first videos that Shay sent to me was him like 
Do you remember you laying in the onion field? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. sending me pictures of that. Like, <laughs> I thought that was, but to me, I was like, I've never been in an onion field. This dude's sending me, like, videos of him laying down on his <laughs> back. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, you know, he, you know, he'd be like, you know, talking about onions. And I was like, all this going on? And then, it, it, but it made me realize, like, I was like, it, I'm not saying it wasn't perfect, but it was to a point where it was Shay coming on, you know what I mean? And it was like, Shay with a Wahi. Hey everyone, boom, boom. And I was sitting here going, I could do that. Right. And I yeah. was like, and it wasn't like, I'm going to cut, but I said to myself in my own way, like when I go to a grocery store, if I go to a certain place, right? Like who are the people we're talking to, you know, things like that. And, and I agree, I agree. It was like, okay, I'm just going to start doing more video. And I think now it's like my videos, like we've talked about this, right? Like, I don't think we ever do still images anymore because we'll only get a few thousand views. You do a video and it's like 13, 14,000 views. And, and that's when, again, and in the, the comments or the reach outs you get like, oh man, I didn't know you put sunscreen on your onions. Like that was, that was a big one. Remember that one? Yeah, that yeah. one got millions of views on TikTok too. But, <laughs> but yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's where it's like amazing, right? Like that's where it's like you get somebody that's sitting at a desk and they're, they're not able to go. And I just ran into a asparagus grower and I was like, hey, is your guy here? Oh no, he didn't come to this show. But the guys commented on LinkedIn on everything we're posting to the show. Those are the people we are reaching. Yeah. Those are the people we want to see because they value. Yeah. They are valuable in our supply chain. And just because you're not here, it doesn't mean that we don't value and you need to get the same it, value as that we're getting here. That's exactly right. Well, look, I've seen... I, 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 one more thing. On Shay's content, what I admire a lot about is that, um, you know you can be provocative with what you're talking about. You have an opinion, right? I mean, yeah. you have the ability for some of us that work for larger companies, you kind of have to ride a fine yeah, right, line. Right, Yeah, I don't, um, have, that, I don't I, have that, I, that filter. I really, <laughs> I really enjoy that. I mean, I, I admire it. I mean, I'm jealous, actually. I mean, I think that's a really cool thing that you do. I mean, I know you probably get some blowback regardless, but you know what you're signed up for, yeah, right? We all do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's the thing that I like, we, we're, we're all passionate. And if you don't share the passion, then what's the point, right? Yeah. And so that that's kind of what when it comes to some of these rants that I occasionally do, I, I think I can only think of like three really good rants that They're I've had against. Good. But the, the the reason that I've done that is because I feel like sometimes as an industry, we don't stick up for ourselves. Oh, true. And and especially on the grower packer side, and especially on the farmer side, if I go one one level below that farmers are so bad at just accepting everything that comes at them. And so someone's got to be uh, provocative enough or, or uh, forward enough to be loud and try and be heard. Yeah. I, I, I read something you had said about um, how do you expect um, someone to pay your price if they don't know what it took to produce the product? Yeah. Oh, right? Absolutely. Um, I really like that. 100%. Yeah. All right. Hate to do it, Eddie, but it is that time. We can't keep going? We can't keep going. Okay. We can keep going, but we just have to do it on well, another day. We mean, have to do it on okay, another so, day. We have, yeah. So we're doing this but world. But are they listening to us? We don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we when we know. do this world tour, um, we well, didn't get to talk about Shay's flying, so go, maybe we, he can take I us out. I was going to say, we, we'll, we'll hit Shay up for the plane, and maybe he can he can take us uh, whoa, whoa, to, whoa, to Spain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Patrick, yeah, yeah. sorry, we to, back this up sorry to hone in on, <laughs> on, your, on, on your... There's only two parachutes. You guys can come. <laughs> <but> yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so, but no, guys, really appreciate, like I say, you know, the background story. You know, most of that I did not know, right, how you guys got here, how you got in the business. And uh, ideally, that's, that's really what we want to communicate for the folks out there when they tune in. Learn a little bit about, about you guys. They know about you on the podcast. They know about the content you're putting out. But uh, a lot of times, they don't know about who you are and how you got there. So really appreciate it. And, you know, different journeys, right? And you guys, it, it's, it's interesting with you because you kind of took the journey together somewhat. You, you, yeah. you, know, you worked off each other with... Uh, you know, you and the laying in the onion field inspired him with some stuff. And then sounds like he inspired you to really take it to the next level and put yep. it out there. So really, really good story on that and your entrepreneurship. Congratulations uh, on your success. Yeah, Both success. For, for sure. Years. And uh, it's great to see. And certainly love having you guys on. We will maybe have to not do that this you again. need it, but any plugs you want to share with our audience? You got any plugs? I don't think I have any plugs. I mean, boots? if you want to go find us, yeah. uh, Shay Farm Kid. I mean, I'm anywhere you want, whatever platform you're on. Uh, that that would be it. I'd be love to have more followers. I'd love to share what I do. I like it. Uh, I mean, I, I always say I don't. I hate doing plugs. So I will be at the Continental Fresh booth here. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no. I'll, um, listen, everyone. 
you know, I always say my plug is going to be this, you know, choose your platform, choose your network, you know, choose the people that you are dedicated to listening to and then give others a shot, you know, try something new. If you haven't listened to our podcast, take a listen to it. If you haven't listened to Shay's, try it out and uh, develop and understand the content that you want to see and then help your organization develop dynamite content that we want to see. All Gosh, right, gentlemen. darn it. I, was, I had another question, oh but we're going to save it for save, part two. Save it for we're going to save it for yeah. part two. And that is, so you guys are prepared for next time, what your favorite podcasts are to listen to. Because we, we could talk probably oh, about yeah. half an hour about that. Right? Okay. Easy. Awesome. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Shay. Thank you. All right, folks.